chairman, young minds, to be one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I thought there were six, did they? Somebody went to bed. Yeah. Uh, I think the judges. Uh, this morning I was at the State House and there is a whole discussion on presidential round table. And the presidential round table is where KEPSA brings all the cabinet with the president, with the vice deputy president, and all heads of the states like KRA and everybody. And there was one statement made by the deputy president, and he said, in this country, the talent is galore. There is no end to the talent in this country. And he said, I can bet you that throughout the world, you cannot find more intelligent people than we have got over here. They are sought for. You go to Dubai, you go to Qatar, you go to any other places on the Middle East. You go to South Africa, you go to Angola, wherever you go. And if you find somebody who doesn't look the same as the normal people from, from the same country, just say, hey, are you from Kenya? <laughs> and you'll be surprised that 90% he'll be from Kenya. Now, what is the change then? What, what, is, what is required? What is required today? My great speech this morning to His Excellency was only two things. There were two ministers. There was a parliament. That means the, 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 the speaker of the parliament on one side, the head of the government side, and then there was Attorney General. And the question was asked, what is happening to the, um, what you call the business law, law for companies law, what they call company law? What's happening to registration? What's happening to solvency law? What's happening to partnership law? Now, they said that, you know, I have no problem. This is the man from the parliament who is looking after the, the Jubilee Party, head of the Jubilee Party. He says, I have no problem. These people gave us 6,800 pages of company law. And when we started looking at it, we found that there was something which was not right, which was this, which was that. So, Mr. I think that's the problem of Mr. Githu, who is the Attorney General. And the Attorney General got up and said, yes, I think that our learned members of parliament probably don't understand that this exercise has been done through so much of consultation. The top brains in the world has been used and even the Commonwealth Business Council and those people have provided the people and we have, made, we have come down to this issue. Now, are we going to do it or are we not going to do it? So I raised my hand and I told His Excellency, Your Excellency, I don't understand this issue. 1994, 18 of us were selected and we spent two, four, two meetings of four hours each every week. After 18 months, we, we created the whole investment law, the company law, the partnership law, and the the solvency law. You know, presently we are governed by 1948 of British law. And all the attempts that we have done is not bearing fruit. Because somebody is always prepared to say, no, but that's not right. I think the democracy many a times is good, but democracy all the time is not good. The question is that, are we going are we going to have this law or we are not going to have the law? And President got up and said, Do you hear? Do you hear this to the both, both the people? The question is that are we going to be our own obstacles or are we going to make path for ourselves? The people who cannot make path for themselves 
They can never go. They can never run. You go to make path for yourself. And obstacles, if somebody puts an obstacle, you've got to be very careful and very sure. Who is the guy who's putting the obstacle? Is it another Kenyan? Not happy with the, with the growth of Kenya? I think that these are the basic, besides this, whatever you've done here. But first, unless and until you decide as an individual that you want to be a good Kenyan, you want to help Kenya build. You want to become a part of Kenya that's changing. If you don't, and if you're going to be always arguing about issues which has no answers, I keep on telling a debating society. You keep on debating issues. How long can we debate? And that's why we would like to think that each one of you, please, for God's sake, you're young, you're intelligent, you're bright, you're smart. Be Kenyan first. That's what is required first. Your loyalty towards this country. Understanding for this country and the belly in the fire to change this country. If you don't have that, then we are just only painting. We are not making any progress. So with this remark, first, when you go out, ask yourself, are you going to be a true Kenyan or are you not going to be a good Kenyan? If you are, you will find a way. The ways are always found and there is a willingness. And let me give an example of why the willingness is not there. We have been operating at least since I came into the, my businesses in 62 years now, 64 years now. We are now operating in, in about 18 countries in Africa with about 18,000 people working. From 60, from 1962, count. More than 50, 60 years probably. We went to China. And in China, in 10 years, we had 10,000 people working. What was the, was there any reason? Why in China we could employ 10,000 people in 10 years' time? And for 60 or 65 years, We've been struggling in this country. We cannot get in Africa collaborating together. He's a Kenyan, he's a Tanzanian, he's Ugandan, he's this, he's that. You know, unless and until we try to first find out the reasoning, how not to create problems, how to move fast, how to make results happen, then and then it will work. So, World is open for you, and world requires you people. There's going to be huge shortage, huge shortage of good manpower, dedicated manpower, intelligent manpower, who can really deliver and really build the societies and the communities that we live in. And in this way, let me give you some three, four tips off of this. This beautiful 10 experiments you saw. Wonderful. And I take my hats off to the people who have done it. It's not easy. <laughs> Out of 100, one has a capability to say, I will do it. When you say there are 130 projects, there could have been 1,300 projects. But only some went out of their way, wanted to make something, prove their right, they made it, not the others. And this, the presentation, the presentation should be loud and clear. You couldn't even read that anything on the 
Clear demonstration should be there. You cannot sell things unless you are bright, speak, and, 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 and hard about it. You go to sell. If you can't sell, you can have a wonderful project. Keep it at your home. So, the art of speaking, the art of convincing, the art of presenting, is what I think each one of you must learn. So the brightest idea just fall flat. Why? Because you cannot speak. You cannot present. And you cannot present, you, nothing sells. To sell, you go to <clears throat> shake. And shaking means be forceful, up to date. Repeat your whatever you want to say. Repeat 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. In your bathrooms, in your bedrooms, in your bedroom, wherever you want to. But come out with an explanation and a convincing exposition. So the people will say, hey, hey, it's worth trying. Yes, I want that. So the one who really sells. And if you don't get, you, if you cannot, if you cannot, suppose for arguments you don't. Get a person who can sell for you. You can be the brain behind it, but he, let the other can be a presentation. With the presentation makes the most important impact. If you fail in your presentation, you fail in your project. So that's one of the diet that I'd like to speak. But look at the demonstration that we are seeing here. And these are syntax, these are absolutely needed, some of them are very much needed in the country. Our, our education system, to get our people to learn. Teacher. But at the last one of the project was teacher, teacher, something like that. This three to nine, no three to nine. Child starts understanding at the age of two. And by four or five, he's probably mature. Don't go to nine. You know, you can get me like a, like, I, I'm just like a potter, you know, already clay pot. If I break a little bit of this, you cannot, you cannot bend it. It's a young child, when it's growing up, that's the time when you really want, really want to bring that up. And so, though some of the programs that I saw are the programs which are absolutely necessary for the country. The other day I was with the Sony, uh, Samsung, I went to see this office. I was very surprised at the work that they've done the amount of things that they are trying to do. But difference between trying to do and doing the thing, there's a whole lifetime in between. So don't say, I'm trying to do. Whatever little you can do, do it and prove it that it can be done. That's what I think that's possible. Now let's stick to the plastic uh, block that that came out of the plastic. Thousands of experiments have been made in this country, not once, not one. Thousands. I've seen a number of them. From plastic waste to this, to that, to that, to that. How many has worked out? The other day at United Nations, SEEDS program, I gave the uh, keynote speech and gave the first prize to this girl who is doing the poles out of the plastic. Not only that, but she's celebrated worldwide now. So, keeping ideas, thinking about it, and not perfecting it up to the state that is required, is not going to be answers. But look at the ideas, look at the thought, look at the thinking, that robot. The, the robot technology is going, to, is going to go like nobody's business in coming 25 years. Now, I'm too old for that, to 
understand what a robot is really. And I was called that I, many years back, I was called that I'm IC, ICT champion of Kenya. And then after two, three years, I listened, listened about this ICT championship. And then I remember and I thought, hey, I don't even know how to operate a computer. <laughs> In the last seven or eight years, I learned how to operate a computer. So no age is apart. The commitment to do something is is the bar, yes, you don't want to do it, you can have 101 different answers why you don't want to do it. But if you want to do it, then I think you can't be just fooling around yourself. And if you fool around yourself, well, obviously nobody knows that you're fooling around yourself, but the world knows that. Now, I will I would like to see that what is uh, the, one of the questions that I was wanted to discuss with His Excellency and which I've been discussing is the fourth meeting I'll have now. The youth bulge in this country. There are four million youth from secondary school level up to the university graduates pacing streets of Kenya. Four million. And come January, January 1st, come January 1st, one million will be added there. And they all expect they're going to find employment. Let's not kid ourselves. The organized sector employs only two million people. The government employs 750,000. And you want that four million plus every million coming in every year to be absorbed. Unless you become yourself employers, employ yourself and others, you can't find the answer. And for that, we've been asking the government, I don't know, for a number of years we've been arguing with them, but finally, I think with this government, we are winning the game that there is a possibility that there will be smaller, smaller area incubation centers, incubation places, a small many parks, so that the people can go and start doing something. All those 10 experimentation that we saw over here, when they go out and find a space, they will understand how difficult it is. When they want to go and find money, they'll find it how difficult it is. There's a women fund, there's a youth fund, there's a UESO fund. Out of 100 applications, 99 gets rejected. Why? Because there's nobody, it's okay to, to set it up, but then to operate and to say, what is the result? Nobody's prepared to ask. So I think that as a young people, you've got to be understand that you are not going to be employed all the time. Sometimes some of you might be lucky, you might be employed. But all the time you're not going to be employed. You've got to find your own destiny. And destiny is within our own hands. If you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't want to do it, how many times, how many lectures you go to, how many people can take, talk to you, how many, I don't know, you do one degree, you do two degrees, you will not do it because that attitude, mindset must be very different, must be changed. And on you depends the people who are already 70 because they were 20 like you when the independence came. And they have not seen nothing. They depend on you to change it that the remaining 20 years of their life, they can see some results. And so I think that you have a great potential possibility. But you believe in yourself first. If you don't believe in yourself, then that's the end of the day. Believe in yourself. Believe in your capacity. Make effort. No work is hard. I still work today 16 hours a day. 
I don't have to. But I feel that there is a necessity that I should work. And this is where I think all of you come in the picture. United, you are a huge strength. Divided, you cannot. Because the world is cruel, let me tell you. There's a cruel world outside there. Within the in instincts of the university, you find it's wonderful. When you go out, there's a cruel world. And the cruel world will not let you do it unless you're very determined. And so I would like to see that more emphasis on the pure education, instead of pure education, is to build yourself. The capabilities, whoever, whatever the capabilities in this compound is, in this university is, build on that. And I was very surprised when I met first time your, you know, your vice chair, vice chancellor. I was invited into some, I think some agriculture, some seminar over here. And I was surprised. There's a banana chain. There's a cassava chain. There's so many other chains you know you can think about. And yet, and yet, remember this, yet 25% of our population goes to sleep with half a meal, no meal. It's up to us. And how do we, how do we convince you? It's up to us. When I started my life, and my, there were four of us, myself, my elder brother, my two cousins. And we were set up into 40 people, and it, just, it, was, a, it was a factory, Kalu works, we were making sofurias. 40 people working, and six family members. Four of us, one of my uncle, and my, one of my elder brother, six. When you go home, there are 30 others. And many a times we came down to the United States and said, hey, hey, do you want to do this? Or should we find a fine, wonderful work, nine to five, car will be there, no bother. Why worry about the family? Why worry about my brothers and sisters and my siblings? And it was just a fight in our mind. We sat and talked, we sat and talked, we sat and talked for, for about three, four months. Finally, we came along and said, our parents had nothing. My mother was illiterate. My father had done three vernacular in Gujarat, just like Swahili. He could not read, write, or speak English. He had to go and get letters done from, can you please, write me a letter. Can you please write me a letter for the application of the bank? Can you please write me this? He had to go and bear. And he made up his mind that if I don't, if my children don't get education, their future will be no different than mine. And so he pushed us. And many times, I still remember in the morning, they'll get up and say, five o'clock, come on. It's a, it's a wonderful time, go and read now. They would not know whether you've got, you got a comic book or you've got an upside down book. They would not know anything because they can't read anything. But the commitment. And so we felt that if our parents had gone through this sacrifice and given what we are today here, are we going to say, thank you very much? Now that your job is over, we are educated, now bye-bye. And the decision was made that from that day onwards, there was no Saturdays, there was no Sundays, there were no holidays, until we built our plants. And in five years' time, we had 500 people working. It's, <laughs> it's doable. My only emphasis to you is, is doable, provided you are at it and constantly working towards your goals. 
and there will always be hills and valleys in life. Please remember, nothing is so wonderful. It's going to be like this and this and this. But if you at it, honestly be at it, and that, the word I'm again using, honesty, integrity, you can fool anybody else, but you can't fool yourself. Remember that. You can fool your VC, you can fool your professor, you can fool your friends, but you cannot fool yourself. Unless you are so dumb that you believe that you can fool yourself also. So, what are, the, what, are, what are you going to do from here now? I'd like to see that your campus is humming with new ideas, is humming with practicality. Uh, this was wonderful to see Sri Tomato. About 20 years back or 15, 20 years back, I went to Geneva. And in the Geneva restaurant, there was a little plant covered with glass like this, a one Sri Tomato hanging, and there was written, poisonous plant poisonous fruit. Please do not touch. So I told him, I said, hey, this is a tomato. Oh, what's a tomato? And every musungu that comes into my house, my wife makes very really sure that there's a tomato, three tomato juice on the table, and they always ask, what is this? But we don't know how to use it. Our avocados fall all the time. Our mangoes fall all the time. A number of things that we have got which we can't, we can eat and survive. But we don't have an idea. And I'm glad that at least now tomato, uh, tree, uh, what's it called? Uh, tree tomato is an, an ideal issue. So let's make what we have and use them and make the best out of it. So, you are the first one to make a change. No change, no gain. Change starts from you. You don't expect your friend to change. You don't expect your parents to change. You change. And this is the first thing that you've got to really take up from you. I'm astonished the way the things that you, you showed us, a number of things over here. And I must say congratulations for all you people you've done. It is one glimpse. You go to Nairobi University, you'll find the similarity. You go to Kenyatta, you'll find the similarity. You go to Egerton, you'll find the similarity. But to put anything into practice, that's the most hardest thing. And I wish, I wish that this school, this college, this university will start putting ideas into practice. Give more time for the students to put it into practice and say, that's what you are. I can learn chemistry and I can learn physics and I can learn everything else. But in the last two years of your, your curriculum, please pay attention how you can formalize, how you can actualize your ideas and thoughts. And for that, the university has to play a, a huge role. Instead of formalities, what we have got as, as we go every day, it has to be a change maker. And I think this university is a change maker. And I'm very proud that I finally I got the chance <laughs> to come and speak to you. But remember each one of you. Let me give you two other examples which is interesting. In 1940, uh, we went to India. There was some bomb from the northern area. At that time, Mussolini decided to join Hitler. And so a little bomb was falling in the northern part of, of, of Kenya. And the Asian community, you know, we, at least the Ashara community, they don't want to believe in fights. So 
So they decided everybody go India. All the older people, the women and the children all were shipped out to India. After seven days of that ship, when we landed in Mumbai, what struck me first? First, it struck me, there were buildings which are more than five, six, seven stories. There are wide avenues, roads, there were trams, there were double-decker bus. And I asked myself, hey, these people have got the two hands, they just look like us. Why don't we have anything in Kenya with two-story or three-story building? We didn't have a three-story building. We only had a two story and that's it. Crowd on the first floor. And when I went to the United States, that impacted me so much. I can remember that I was first night in New York at 68th floor hotel. Time difference. And you know, getting up at two o'clock in the morning, first thing is you, you, you cry. Why are you here? But then they thought about the same thing. How can United States have hundred story building, huge avenues, the largest users of electricity, anything you talk about, 50, 60% of anything that is produced is used by the United States. Why? Same people, two hands, two eyes, two ears, same gray metal here that you got, BL you got. So use it. And ask yourself, and, and, and keep on asking yourself, why, why others? Why not me? You'll find the answer. So I'd like to say, congratulations. You're in an environment of growth. You're in an environment of what you call building. You can build this country. But you've got to make up your mind. Less talk, more work. And presentation, always remember on presentation. Whatever you do, present it in a way that the guy wants to buy it. The guy wants to say, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And that's how I think you can move. Thank you very much for my, my kind attention. Si